I hope that the talking about um, I hope talking about the twin conceptual conceptual pillars of classical bar chart analysis, namely trends and patterns, is I think it is a good example of what I mean by the virtues of bar chart analysis being its accessibility and clarity in terms of the concepts underlying the analysis. However, that only takes us so far talking about these things in isolation, trends and patterns. It only goes so far. We've actually got to delve a little deeper and get closer to the real world and consider these, how these trends and patterns act on each other and create a certain amount of complexity. There are three thoughts of, sorts of complexity I want to talk about. One is, on any given chart of whatever time period and of whatever bars, bar time interval, there can be a multiplicity of patterns. And there can be a multiplicity uh, either of trends or, or, oh sorry, a multiplicity of trends and patterns. And the relationship between them is, can be complicated. In particular, it's complicated when you have two completed patterns that might be opposing each other in terms of what they're doing to the, uh, the uh, what they're doing to the chart. They can either complement each other and reinforce each other, which as a chartist you would say, our job being to amass as much evidence at any one time, you would say, hmm, two passions, patterns pushing in the same direction, extra good information, extra good predictability. All well and good. So, for example, two patterns that might complement each other might be a small continuation triangle beneath a large head and shoulders reversal. We have the predictive power of the head and shoulders and the predictive power of the small triangle. So at this moment, we have both the head and shoulders driving it downwards and the little triangle, continuation triangle. All well and good. It's common sense to see how that is a satisfactory and more powerful situation than any one of those in isolation. Um, another example might be, for example, uh, a market in a trading range um, breaks down with a little continuation head and shoulders. A broken, which you've got massive resistance there. This doesn't have much. Um, uh, it doesn't have a particular target. This one does, but the massive resistance up there gives you a sense of pressure driving the market on down. Things acting together in a complementary way to make the predictiveness of the chart better than any single pattern. So these are two patterns on the same chart pushing the same direction. Fine. What about when you have two patterns on the same chart that aren't pushing the same direction that actually are opposed to each other? That is a degree of complexity with which we have to deal in the real world. So, for example, we might have a, uh, a triangle, a bull triangle, that fails at the same top there, and it comes back down here, and breaks that horizontal level there. You have the bull triangle and the broken, here you have a small bull trend, and the broken horizontal from the bull trend. A degree of uncertainty enters the, enters the situation, which is unavoidable. There will be opposed patterns that lead to uncertainty. Sometimes it's obvious, which is more important. If, for example, you have a head and, you have a head and shoulders of that scale and a little double bottom here with massive resistance here at the old neckline, and clearly this might yet drive it to the old neckline, but overall you'll be more bearish since the implications of this small double bottom are relatively insignificant compared to the implications of this head and shoulders top. At other times, it won't be, more, it won't be so clear and the markets may be... Uh, the patterns, the opposing forces, might be more equally balanced. In short, then uncertainty enters the equation and you've got to pull back from your usual easy predictive qualities that you would have with a single pattern. So this is the first area of uncertainty we've got, we, which we've got to sort of take on board. The idea of opposing patterns in the same chart. Okay. So the second area of, of complexity is 
Um, we've, we've talked about opposing charts in the same time frame. The next one is when uh, the opposing charts in different time frames. By the way, for example, we've been looking at charts opposed to each other, for example, in this time frame, say a double bottom. But what happens if take the, the contexts, is a massive double top here. So this is resistance here, resistance here. You've got a bearish double top, a bare head and shoulders top, and a little bull, uh, um, a, a double bottom here. So this is another area. In short, what I'm saying is that every chart exists within a wider context. And so whenever, if, when you have a chart, and you've got some patterns opposing, helping each other in that chart, you've got to understand that there's a wider context that might completely render whatever happens in this chart virtually redundant insofar as, for example, for example, there might be a, uh, you may have a head and shoulders top there with a bearishness implicit, but it might be um, that this is part of a massive uh, double bottom here whose minimum move is up to here. So the, you have a small bear pattern here and a massive bull pattern here. But if you only look at this chart, you would not see this. There's always a wider context. That's the second sort of complexity. And the third complexity is that within with any given uh, uh, time bar chart of a certain, bars of a certain time frame, whether it be weekly bar chart, there are always patterns hidden within it by changing the time frame of the bars. For example, there's the weekly bar chart. There may be inside this, hidden within this, if we look at the daily bar chart, this may turn out to be um, a completed head and shoulders top. So that this is just at the top of a trading range, but here is a, a piece of information hidden within that. So I don't wish to labour the point, but I've just tried to categorise the different forms of uncertainty due to the notion of multiple patterns and trends within any given, uh, any given market at the same time. Our job as chartists is to look at all the evidence bring to bear all our analysis on all, as many time frames as possible to see all the forces at work in any one market at any one time. And then we're able to take a decision, given our own trading uh, um, predilections, as to what, work, what force is relevant for our tra trading time frame. Let me be more clear. So when we, for example, want to understand the Treasury bond market, the, the procedure is to start with the very longest time frame we possibly can. And it may be, for example, that there is a trading range in the Treasury bond market like this in the monthly chart. And this is maybe um, 10 years. And then we look at the uh, daily chart, uh, the, month, the weekly chart, and we see that this is in fact a head and shoulders top. Fantastic. It's a good bear trend coming down here. And then we go into the the daily chart and we find out whether, for example, an ideal situation might be that this has got a small continuation triangle. So then we would get a picture. The long-term picture is there's a massive resistance level up here. We're in a trading range at the top of a trading range. The medium-term picture is that we've had a reversal at the top of the trading range. There is a, that's actually driving the market down and the short-term picture would be a triangle all time frames would be congruent with each other and driving the market in the same direction. That's the sort of evidence and information we as chart traders want, above all. Equally, we might find there's a series of contradictions in the long, medium and short term. And that too is powerful evidence and makes us treat the situation with caution. The central principle of chart trading is to amass as much evidence in all time frames, put it all together, find and get a complete picture of all the forces operating on the market, and then make your decision in terms of 
uh, prioritize which force is overwhelming at any one time. You might say, well, if I'm trading the five, uh, the, the, hour, um, the uh, day chart, why would I care about the monthly chart? Well, you may, might find that your, the day chart might be a, um, a continuation triangle at the top with massive resistance here. It's important. You need to know about the monthly chart to understand the importance, even though the day chart is bullish. Equally, you might say, if I'm trading the monthly chart, what do I care about the day chart? But it would be absurd not to realise that in terms of timing or entry into the market, that the market might yet go up and test this again. And, uh, try, uh, uh, and you need to know what's happening in the day chart to finesse your entry and exit into the long-term charts. Yes, certainly. I mean, I don't think other mar mar I think it's rather unusual for most market participants to, to look at all these time frames. But, the, but different participants will be looking at different ones. So effectively, the market is reacting to all these different time frames at the same time. Long-term traders will be trading, reacting to this chart. Medium-term traders will be re reacting to this one. And short-term traders will be re reacting to this one. If you have all those, if you understand only what the day traders are doing, you might be missing what the, what the, what the weekly traders are doing. If you understand what they're all doing and wait for that moment of um, congruence, I put it, when they're all pushing in the same direction, you have a very, very powerful and predictably powerful situation to take advantage of. Um, that's the system. That is, it's only, it is only by developing a systematic approach that we can overcome the complexity of patterns within the chart patterns between charts, and patterns hidden within uh, the, um, the greater granular, you know, a day chart within a weekly chart or the hourly chart within the day chart.